Hi, welcome to Pictures, Noise and Words. I'm Hedgie. And I'm Paz. And this is one of those podcast episodes where we just talk for about five hours. So uh, there won't be actually anything to watch. Feel free to put the sun in the background and do something else. Or be very attentive to every word we say. That's probably better. Um, we're not that interesting. No, we're not that interesting. Yeah. So we're going to do a video about, or a podcasty type thing, about albums that are not as good as they should have been so i imagine a band you like this band you're you they've put out really good stuff and then that album comes out that just isn't any good that's what it's about basically isn't it you, if you oh, oh, please yeah. expand <laughs> well as, um there's a podcast a guy called metal mickey i think like and uh basically he did one that says 10 terrible albums in your collection that isn't St. Anger and this this <laughs> oh, was picked okay. up by it's not St. Anger right, <laughs> this, this was picked up by quite a number of uh, um, metal YouTube channels and it's quite a lot if you, if you search for that uh, and I thought that's a really interesting idea that but um, I, I thought oh let's go down and sm change it slightly not, not terrible albums because some people can't like, um, it's all subjective isn't it yeah yeah, yeah totally guess like somebody picked uh, somewhere in time I thought yeah by I mean I thought what? you're joking one but of their best like, but then that it's like it's my five favorite no they're album, just I mean. wrong it's in my 10 <laughs> top 10 albums of all time somewhere in time. <laughs> and, and then it sort of brings home how subjective it all is and in what kind of mood you're in you first listen to it and you know we all yeah. these things some people like Linkin Park nothing wrong with their first album <laughs> maybe that should be on the list uh, everything after uh, that yeah. first album um so I thought it's it's plus in, in this uh digital age as well let's make it um albums that didn't click with you uh, uh of which you paid money for it says <laughs> oh, I the way, albums you paid money for that just didn't do it for that you, you were, for whatever reason that you were yeah. then totally disappointed with yes yes for whatever reason at all and can say we all list these differently some of them you and this will them. be subjective we might list your favorite album you know mm. just accept you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> so uh do you want me do you want me, do you want me to start this is, this is the uh um the only digital album i bought I, I'm, I'm sure i bought the physical version you can't, can't find, find it, it. <laughs> so maybe, maybe i've got so it. many of those where, I, where I, have I my have cds gone I think and, my wife's ebaying them uh, and um and but i say i do have a, a digital I did, I did buy it uh and that's the new ramstein album oh yeah I can't deutschland. What it's called deutschland is it and i couldn't get through it on it first listen yeah, i'm doubting myself now i'm sure that's what it was called it's it, there was just <clears throat> it's i'm just deflated listening to it i'm so pumped so I thought, oh yeah i knew ramstein and it was just so by the numbers when you you know you love mutter and um rosenrot rosenrot and um what was on before that riser riser i think um and then you get this i don't think i wouldn't have put any of those songs on the new one on those any of those three albums i think they think they were good i was so disappointed and just felt like going through the motions which is probably a phrase we're going to use quite we're a lot going to use quite a yeah, lot yeah going through just, the going through just the motions, going through the motions. Yeah, yeah, and uh, interestingly i did not buy that album mm. i don't think i've ever heard it all because i was so off put off by maybe maybe you got it and told me it was awful <laughs> or and that the the tap that deutschland eight minute or however long it was song they put out mm. just didn't do anything for me yeah and it kind of and I don't want to judge obviously something on one song you know and suddenly go off a band because there's one bad song but I think there was a there was a quite a feeling around it at the time that yeah and I just it's almost a case of I don't want to be disappointed so I won't yeah, listen yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. kind of thing la 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 I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing so no I, I haven't I don't think I've actually heard it all mm. um yeah so there you go that's my that's one of mine okay so I'll, I shall pick one that's the most, probably the most famous one on my list because mine might be very personal rather than rather than huge hits. And I know this is going to be on your list. I might, do I have the, I might have the prop? I'll dig out the do prop. You want, you're going to guess. I, I, I've got, you're guessing I've got what it is in my, in my Iron Maiden book of soul bag. It's, uh, my my mother still won't let me. bag of souls. <laughs> bag of souls. Right? Yeah. Do you want to mention it? And I'll, and I'll pull it out. 
And I, you don't even know what I'm going to say. Know. Well, I've got it in my hand, ready. <laughs> Dream Theater. Ah! The Astonishing. The Astonishingly Bad Album. Now, funnily enough, because we were going to do this, I tried listening to it again yesterday. Fantastic. Oh, it looks nice. Yeah. I tried to listen to it again yesterday and I just couldn't <laughs> get I couldn't make any headway into it. After the it's brilliant out, really. okay. After the overture at the beginning. Yeah. Which I was which is fine. It is a nice piece of packaging and I'm it was totally marketed mean. to death before it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which suggests they knew it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Pre order, please. All, all, all his characters before in, he comes in, out in the story. Yep, fantastic. Um, so I tried to listen to it yesterday and I gave up literally halfway through <laughs> disc one. Yeah, that's how far as I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, I, I, I haven't got to the end. I, don't the, think. I think this is a case again of which I said, I've said a few times in the past, where you're measuring a band against itself. And you know how good Dream Theatre are. And I'm a big Dream Theatre fan, you know? Don't, don't get me wrong, you know. Uh, Scenes from a Memory is one of the best prog albums ever made, in my humble opinion. And when I heard they were making a big double CD prog uh, concept album, I, I was like, oh, God, yeah, please give me another scenes from a memory. So, so expectation was super high, mm. and that's fair because this is Dream Theater we're talking about—a bunch of some of the most talented people on the planet. Yeah. Um, and then you just get this miserable <laughs> album. It's 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 slow and miserable, in my yeah. humble opinion. All, all the tropes. All the I'm going to keep saying, in my humble opinion, I need to stop saying all, that. all the Dream Theater tropes have been. Uh, sucked out of it basically um and it's just it, like dragging yourself through it and i can't no, i don't i'm not sure i've ever made it <laughs> no, I've to made the it end no. it might get it might get awesome to the end but i don't i'd well, no have a hell of a rescue wouldn't it yeah to get from to the get last that. last couple of tracks yeah. it is and they must have spent so much time on it thinking this is amazing oh yeah yeah maybe they over thought it but, i don't know on, on, <laughs> yeah. on the flip side of that you can think well Dream Theater for me had plateaued the album before because the album before nearly made this list. But, <laughs> uh, but at least it sounds like Dream Theater, and you think, well, okay, obviously they, they were trying. Well, this to, one took it to a new. A new they they were trying to, trying to do something <laughs> different, and it did feel just on the look at it. You think, oh, like they're going to do something amazingly different on it, and I wasn't expecting them to just come up with something that would be like a Disney soundtrack movie. So, I have the. F the feeling when I'm listening, and this, this occurred to me again yesterday when I tried to listen to it again, especially with, and I didn't get very far, so I'm talking about the first third here. They had, a, they had Rush's 2112 on in, in, in their heads when they were making this, because I, it sounds almost like that's what they were going for to me. Mm. Like, can we, can we recreate 2112? Not, people are going to start going, what? It's nothing like, and I agree, it is nothing like it has that same feel to it um and it's just well you know an album's bad when it's one of your favorite bands and you can't get through it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know and you yeah. and you want to like it that's the thing you go into it wanting it to be good and you're like mm. uh, it's okay that song but it'll be it'll, I'll be all right it'll get better and you know and I'll I'll grow to like that one <laughs> and yeah. you start yeah. making allowances yeah. for it and you just you get so far and it's just like no <laughs> no. Yeah, I, 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 I advised my brother to listen to it, and he hated it. <laughs> after about fifty, he had enough after fifteen minutes. He's not even a metal fan. So I said, yeah, "Listen to this," and he just thought it was poor. Yeah. On, on an ideas front, he thought it was I poor. Not just on it concept of what they're trying to do. You know, if you're going to do something different, fine. But you're still going to have the ideas to it to back it up, and I yeah. don't think they even had that. Yeah, I will never listen to it again. You heard the new one, by the way. It was out, it was out Friday. Two days ago. Oh no, I haven't. Pretty good. Give it, give it a listen. Can you one? Well, that's one good thing about quality musicians and everything. There's always a chance the next one will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know what was going on in their lives when they wrote the astonishing. But the one, I, what, but it put me off. Dream Theater 
I mean, they're on a, they're on the fence. I was on the fence with them anyway after the self-titled one, but this pushed me so far over the edge that I, I have not bought one since. And uh, the one after the after this, I can't remember the name of uh, it. Lost the track of Skull the... or something. Yeah, uh, it was a return back to doing an hour. I, I, I was with and stripped back, and I said, it sounds right, but it just completely put off and even the new one i've listened to the new one go yeah that's that's not bad that but i have no interest in in buying it i think i think it's killed me <laughs> killed my love of dream theater unfortunately not the early stuff but dream theaters became victims of their own success anyway because they were so playing on number on on 11 that they're playing on 11 all the time if you like and it's 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 super technical it's super brilliant musicianship but it's super all of the time <laughs> and you kind yeah. of just wears you down and it gets to point out where do you where so, do you yeah, go where, where do you go where, where so you the go? next album comes out and you go well, yeah it's brilliant but it's the same as the last yeah. one and the one before that and the one yeah. before that and, and yeah i don't to, 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 and they victim have, of your own success and they have reached a point that if you put all of uh all of the dream theater's ideas into a computer program and asked and developed a computer program to develop a, a dream theater song based on what you put in the kind of the new album sound like what a computer would come up with as a, as a dream theater song would be that makes sense <laughs> anyway but I, well, yeah where would where do you take dream theater that, that is a question I, and I, oh yeah, yeah i don't have to admire I don't them to come envy up with their problem at uh, all you know I don't, I, um you know. james Labrie, not what he used to be either well, he used to be, especially uh, live a lot, a lot of the um melodies you come up with seem to be similar oh, i've heard it all he mangles before. his vowels live now because he can't yeah. sing that the because he can't sing some of it anymore all right so if, if you listen to him live anything in the last couple of years you'll hear him mangle his vowels and he'll change words so they're easier to sing and it just doesn't sound right okay Anyway, should we move on? Yeah, quick. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the Dream Theatre Army come after us. Too, yeah. late. Too late for that one, I think. Is, is We're going to upset everyone. Yes. Yeah. You know, because everything you pluck out, I'll be like, wait a minute, that's my favourite <laughs> album. Here's it, it, another one. <laughs> Divin Townsend's Empath. We've got to criticise wow. Divin Townsend. I, I, look, Which again. is fair, to be honest, because he has done a few. Again, look at this packaging. It's that's amazing. really nice. He's done a few that I just don't get along with. Um... And that's probably one of them. I <laughs> but I don't own this, so I can't really. Uh... I can't, still can't get it out of the. I have got it. I don't think I actually get it out of the packaging. I think I got the MP3 with it when you bought when you bought Does it. it and... Push out. No. No. Oh. Anyway, um, I, I, I was. I haven't got this. Um, it's very nice. It was. So it's too eclectic for its own good. I think the. Um, even the heavy one that uh, people, oh, you know, Devin Townsend doing a heavy one, like Strapping Young Lad, it was just, it was tuneless. Um, I just, it just didn't, just didn't click with me. I know people, some people love it for that, for these reasons, but for me, that's yeah, good. I'll tell you what, I'm never going to listen to it because it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't actually it, it come out. It doesn't actually come out. Uh, I don't want to, I'm too afraid to press too, you yeah. know, hard enough to get the thing out because I'm just going to. I don't hold it in high regards. You'll probably rip the package. But I'm not that desperate. It's so nice. But I'm not so desperate to get the, uh, nice. the CD out. It, it, it's, uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's... Well, the thing about Devin is he does what he wants to do and he has different sides to him, doesn't he? And he'll drop, you know, one type of project because he's interested in doing something something else has taken his attention and his yeah. fancy kind of thing he's about to put out two albums it got delayed till january now i think or december mm. um because they can't manufacture the cds believe it or not not because <laughs> not for any other reason the plus apparently the plastic bit that holds the cd mm. and you can't get them there's a shortage like, oh, there's, there's a shortage other, of everything the case, in the world. Yeah. just the bit that holds the cd mm. inside yeah you can't get them and they've had to put back the release of the cd right. for that reason. that reason but he's releasing two albums isn't he one that's i believe very like is like ambient i don't know this for sure um but like one's his ambient kind of mood music kind of thing which he's done before mm. and another one's a more straightforward yeah. in townsend project kind of thing i believe one called the puzzle and one called something else and they're done and he's currently working on another album so you know 
is nothing if not yeah. prolific. Yeah, because good thing is, um, if you've got not, too if, many ideas, <laughs> if you got head, I think. <laughs> if you don't like a David Townsend album, chances are you're going to get another one very quickly. So you can just. just He's done albums so. in the past that have not clicked with yeah. me. Yeah, but the, there's one in there that's like, say, super heavy, a tuneless lot of noise. And then straight after it, you got something that uh, wouldn't sound out of place on the CBeebies channel, on the Disney channel. It was, got, and it, 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 was, it, it was... Well, why is his Disney song? Is it, is it, that, yeah, that, Hear Me's the heavy one. Yeah. Is his Disney yeah. song. And, it's like, and I remember listening to it, and I said, I'll get nothing from this. It's, um, it's just, say it didn't click for me. I still wish I'd seen him a month ago when he came to uh, Manchester. To be, to be fair, because, <laughs> because he has, he's been a bit of a mixed bag with me for the last few albums, I've just, and I've seen him so many times before. Yeah, I've seen him so I, many I've got, times. I, I'd, I'd rather go and see someone new now rather than seeing Devin again, because I think I've seen him at uh, my, my peak interest in Devin. I, I saw him it's enough peaked. times. I don't think has, it, has Devin peaked. I don't know. I, no, I, your, I, I, your, your peak interest. My 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 interest in him has peaked. Yeah, I think that's probably where. Yeah. Think. You can do another because it do another? has us more than I do. Well, well, you'll certainly chime in with this one, <laughs> and you'll probably go, "Oh yeah, I can't I <laughs> forgot this one." This is good. This because I have no idea what's coming out of the magic bag. Fear Factory's transgression. Sack magic. I think I've got the right one out. This is the one. They did. Yeah. I don't remember it. What's on it? Dino had left. Um. Uh, what year was this? They did it after Arch Archetype, which is which was brilliant. Dino had left. Then they did. Then uh, Christian moved on to guitars. They got the guy from uh, Strapping on Ladin to do the bass. Oh yes, I remember and they that. did uh, so. They did archetype, and then uh, then they did this one about a year later, and it's just awful. It and it, it Byron Stroud, that's his name. It does feel like a contractual obligation album. Um, the fact that you can't even remember it, please. Yeah, you know, if you, I wouldn't. <laughs> I can't remember. They made a video. I can't remember what the video so was. So that was two thousand and five, and that would yeah. not have come to mind at all if I was yeah. listing. Yeah, trans um, transgression. Just thought it, I just thought from from archetype. I thought archetype was was excellent. It's one of my favourite Fear Factory albums. It kind of after after Digimortal, I thought well, it's Fear Factory by the number. Then archetype came out and it really thought yes, there's life in Fear Factory. They really stepped up and then they, and then produced this. I mean, they've had a a, a rocky. Uh, several decades. Oh God, God yeah, they? Of, yeah. of court cases and <laughs> a revolving door of their uh, members, and you're never. I'm never quite sure what what the quality of the thing is going to be, um, and I was pretty sure of what the quality of them live was going to be, and it was going to be pretty bad um, because Burton just just can't sing the songs, and now he's gone, and it's turned into. Dino and musicians for hire. <laughs> um, I'm actually more optimistic <laughs> that they'll get a singer who can sing it, and maybe it will revitalise it a bit. I don't know. The DVD. Or I don't even know what's on the DVD. It will just stagger on as as it, it's not a good as Dino's pension plan. <laughs> it's not a know. good sign when you've got eleven songs on it, uh, and two two of which are covers. One's a U two cover. The other one's a Killing Joke cover. And Fear Factor is a band that's done some of my favourite songs. Yeah, yeah. That's so I think this was a this was a, a misstep. And I can't remember what came after this. I think it, I think it was. Did Dino come back in? I think they fell apart after this. I might have to check my Fear Factory history. Or something. Yeah, yeah, well, it's Correct very checkered. Even Wikipedia's probably yeah. tying itself in that sort of Fear Factory. Um, <laughs> so but you know, they did Power Shifter. One of my. I think Power Shifter came after that. I think one of my. Yes, the, the I would came. say it did. You know, and regroup. Dino came back in, and, and that's what they were painkiller for me as yeah. one of one of those songs that you just oh my giddy ant kind of thing. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm a big fan of prog, and there's a uh, if you like prog stuff, and you like um, sort of what's the word I'm looking for ensemble albums. Then there's a man called Arian Lukeson who makes 
uh, the most amazing ensemble prog albums under the name of Arian. And um, it's the human equation that he did is just a just amazing you know i absolutely love it and you guess everyone on it you know michael Ackerfeld from from um um opeth and you know simone simmons you know from uh epica and and so on and so forth basically anyone he likes you know um, bruce dickinson's on them and you know just everyone's on them devin's on it loads of people and they all come and they make these and he writes these big epic albums and some of them are fantastic and some of them are just really good you know and he did one and this is not the album i'm going to going to say but he did one called the theory of everything which was four 20 minute tracks and that was my lowest um scoring in my head album for arian because it was four 20 minute tracks with no hooks there were no choruses to grab hold of or anything yeah. like four pieces it's all one story and they're four movements within the you know sections of this whole story and it was bloody hard work you know I, i've listened to it like probably only three times because whenever i go to listen whenever it comes on on if i'm on my ipod or something i think i can't sit through 20 minutes of this sort of thing and this isn't the album that i'm going to say so he and then and then after that he made he, went, he made some great albums again and, and fantastic stuff and then he brought out this latest one called transitus God, have you heard of that one? Simone Simmons is on it. Well, lots of people are on it, you know, like, as ever, but, you know, mm. proper names and everything. And it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't mean she wears that hedge. <laughs> and the reason it stinks is because he... And, and it was a conscious decision to do this. I just don't think it worked for him. He made a conscious decision to make more of a rock opera than his story-driven concept albums. So when you get something that's more story than song, and Tom Baker's the narrator on it. Is it really? Yeah. Uh -huh. So it sounds great, you know. Yeah. You go, Hello, I'm Tom Baker. Da, 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 da. That's nothing like Tom Baker. But you know, you know his voice and everything and, and, and he's so and there's a lot of narration on it. So you because that it's very story driven, but the pro, the main problem is the thing that makes this album unlistenable is that all of the tracks are too short. So Simone Simmons comes on as Lady whatever, you know, her character. I don't know what character it is because, like I say, I can't listen to the damn thing. And she's fantastic. And, she'll, and, she, and the song starts and she starts singing and you go, oh, yeah, ding, it stops. Hello, I'm Tom Baker. Um, da, 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 da. And, and she's gone. It doesn't like... It, and then, hello, I'm Jack the, the chimney sweep. Hello, I'm such and such a person. Da, 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 da. And it's all choppy to the point where you can't listen to it maybe if it was on stage Except and people were acting it out at the same time yeah. it would work but it doesn't work and i've had comments in my because i've never you can't do Aryan stuff very easily on youtube because there's so many people involved in it it all gets blocked because the copyright for all of those artists i get i imagine is a tangled nightmare I don't, I don't know if that's a reason, but that's, I'm guessing that's a reason. So a lot of, so Arian gets blocked. I've seen a few people do them and get away with it, but anyway. And I was, there was a video a while ago. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like, might have been the Cathabodua one where I was saying, this is how this sort of thing should be done. And it's, and that other one is something else that I've heard recently was really bad. And someone put in the comments, I know what you were talking about. You were talking about Arian's transitors. It is a pile of crap. And I am a big <laughs> fan of Arian sort of thing. You know, so somebody really needed to get it off their chest. And uh, as it happens, that wasn't what I was talking about. But, but it just, that just made me think, yeah, that's exactly the, the effect that this is going to have on the fan base in that it's such a... I cannot listen to it. And that's another one that if I mm. plucked it off my shelf, it would be like, look at all this artwork and look at this seven vinyl set that you can unfold. <laughs> you know, and, and then look at all of the work that's gone into it. And, and you know, Arian Lucasson's a very talented guy. Um, 
and he's consciously decided to make this rock opera, you know, and, and make it as a very, very more story driven than anything else. And, and in doing so, has killed it. Yeah. Uh, it, it does sound, it does so, sound yeah. awful. Is it, yeah. are the vocals like uh, along the sort of theatrical lines? It's, I am Absolutely. opening the door again. <laughs> oh, what you doing here? It's not, not like that, main lyric, is it? Because <laughs> um, that, that sort of is really, really clunky. The, the, the story is not great either, um, which doesn't help. It's a bit, it's a bit hackneyed. Mm. Um, but yes, it is very. You know, there's mm. lots of introducing characters. There's lots of. The, the main problem with it, I don't really have a problem with something's even a bit corny because sometimes that adds some charm. It's just so choppy that you you can't get into any of it. That anything you mm. think, oh, this one sounds good and it stops before it gets going. Um, it's literally like two minutes of this and three minutes of that kind of thing. And it, so you never you can't get hold of it. <laughs> the damn thing just keeps yeah. slipping out of your hands when you, <laughs> as you try and it, you just that's another thing where my expectations are right up here because of all the stuff that they've done before. Yeah. And, then, yeah, and, is... and I know it's not just me. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you're an Arian fan, please do chip in in the comments and tell me that this is your favorite Arian album and I am completely <laughs> wrong. Don't know what you're talking about, man. Yeah. You just don't get it. Yeah. yeah. You just didn't get <laughs> it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. Okay. Talking about albums I didn't get. We don't I, do I, 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 I did get it, but obviously I didn't get it. Um, it's probably this one. I don't get it, man. Uh, Sabotage's Wake of Magellan or Magellan, what do you call it? Magellan, but Magellan. Pass, I can't comment on this. Um, another, another concept album. Um, it's the last one with uh, Zach Stevens on it. I can't see a date on it. Oh. Um, uh, I grew up 1987. That'll be 97. That. No, 97. Okay. Um, I loved, um, I grew up with Sabotage um and this one came after uh dead winter dead yes which is all right but had some um uh excellent stuff on it as this one it just seems a bit of a retread of everything else they've done it seems it doesn't seem inspired wow that's a chunky booklet though <laughs> i know i got another concept album that doesn't doesn't work oh, um no. it's caught up on it it's caught up on the CD bits and I don't, want to, pull it. It out, yeah. I don't want to pull it. I don't want to pull it. I might tear it. <laughs> it's all right. I, don't I hate it. it. I don't care. <laughs> Can it, is it? Oh, there you wow. Go. I mean, um, it's got two it's short songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't rock. There's a couple of songs that you know up tempo, but it doesn't rock for uh, for the most part. That's a lot of writing, people. Yeah. Um, when it does rock, it you know, it's, it, production on it is is very thin. Um, they on the handful of rain um, album, they came up with the uh, like a counterpoint vocal thing with our four vocal parts. Uh, so oh, that's really cool. That and they did it again the next album because nothing's stopping them. They did it twice on here. <laughs> What else can you do? Go on. I mean, it's, I mean, our glasses are right, and making uh, the title track's not bad. But I thought it was a step down from what they normally come up with. And so there's no another problem riffs. where you're a huge sabotage fan, yeah. and then you get something that you just can't love. <laughs> the, 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 the it's last... too big for the seat to fit <laughs> under the tabs in the CD yeah. case. Well, they're all great musicians. I just, I just, uh, I just felt it was un uninspired. Um, it was the one after that. I really enjoyed the one after that because it had more of a chunky production and it had bigger riffs, where it's just, just short on all of that. And, and I hate to put sabotage in this list, but uh, it was a case of high expectations and it, and uh, the, too much the, hard work to listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't remember if you, I think it, uh, I did a sabotage ranking and it came second bottom. So. Oh, so there's something worse. Yeah, but that's a um, that's a really early one, oh. Fight for the Rock, and there's reasons behind that. So okay, I can understand that one. Yeah, this and one. and it's when a, a band's put out five albums that are great, and yeah. then they sort out of nowhere yeah. comes a stinker. Yeah, so, I mean they yeah. haven't got the classic sabotage logo on it, which I, I don't understand. Great artwork though. I think the list of bands that must have put out a good first album do we do, they had 10 years to write. Can we do another one? And, yeah, go on then. And then a bad second album must be huge. Um, it's not that one. It's this one. I get mixed up between the two. 
It's a gamma ray to the metal. Or is it? Could be <laughs> under the feed too. E either way, uh, these aren't great. I might have to go <laughs> look at my um, uh, ranking video. I found it, which one it, it is. It sounds like a dead heat. Um, but there's one I tried to listen to it not so long ago, not for this video, but just generally thought I must give that another chance. So 2007. And, and I just couldn't get to the end of it. I think it's to the metal. And that's 2009, so that's the next one after yeah. that, I guess. Um, Probably. So they went through a patch. Yeah, I couldn't get very far in it. it, it the ideas again just seem uninspired. Um, it's got two discs again. Um, I think it's this one to the metal because um, it seems to have a lot of ideas borrowed from other bands, very derivative, not only themselves, but other, other bands as well. They're just, uh, Is this contractual obligation? Is it uh, I, I, I don't know. The, need um, another album out here. I think mm. the drummer left after this one. They've only done one more after after this. So uh, they haven't really done much since 2010. They've done one album and then Kanye did the solo album. And then it's all back to Halloween. I, it just felt like they'd run out of Gamma Ray, run its course and run out of steam. And I think they should have um, finished. They've just got a new two. singer. And they've got a new singer, yeah. So yeah. they're obviously going to do put something out. Yeah, right? and, and say we you see, watched them live doing Lust for Live, which on, was sounding which, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Or perhaps I just needed a needed a bit of a break. I don't I don't know. The stuff on the stuff on Land of the Free Two wasn't too bad. The last song, the Insurrections, is uh, is, is pretty good. I think it's to the metal. Is um, to the metal sounds just like um, I think about Judas Priest. Mm. Like all the best ideas sound like somebody else. <laughs> it's, uh, it doesn't help. Okay then. So, speaking of bands that you thought were amazing at the time, this one went away for quite a long time and then came back with something that I just don't like. That's sometimes the case, though, isn't it? You know, they come back as different people, don't they? And there was a heck of a gap. At the gates, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they did Slaughter of the Soul. I think they did something else after that, didn't they? But they did Slaughter, Slaughter of the Soul from 1986 or something. I don't know. Was it that long ago? No, I don't think it was. Was it not? No. My concept of time's shot. 92. I think it's 90s album, yeah. Anyway, Slaughter of the Soul, amazing album by At The Gates. And it's like that real kind of Swedish speed metal sound kind of thing it was just like listen to this whenever you you know it was one of those wasn't it you have to listen to this and then they went away for a long time i can't remember if they did did, did they do another album after that i feel like they did but anyway they went away and they came back with an album called at war with reality and the thing about this that's that was so disappointing for me was that musically it sounds great but the singer, and I've said this before anyway, just ruins it for me. His monotone, shouty growl is if you skipped through the tracks, if you had it on vinyl and you just kept moving the needle to random places, it would sound exactly the same. Every day, you're like, dun -dun 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 and you're like, yeah, yeah. And then the singer comes in and just goes, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> move the needle just every song and it was just like i'm so disappointed yeah, yeah. and it, and and now maybe i had my rose tinted spectacles on looking back at slaughter of the soul i don't know but but at war with reality it just it's one of those things that I wanted to be good and I tried to really like it. <laughs> you know, oh, no, I, never, I, I never bothered with it. No, no, I, I put effort in to like it. Yeah. And, it and it's one of those that, that I, whenever I see it, I still go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> should I, you, you, you've let me down. Not that they owe me anything, but you've let me down. <laughs> it's one of those. So yeah, that's all I've got to say about them because it is a, it is a one problem problem. You yeah, know, it's a, yeah. it's a one note problem. That's a shame that. <laughs> no pun in, yeah. well, pun intended, to be honest. It's a one note problem. It's just rah, 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 rah. It's like, is that it? Is that all you got? <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Moving on. All right. Next, then. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to put it on this list, but I just have to get this off my chest. 
and um, we're, we're and just counselling uh, yeah, live. I, I, I love these guys, um, and I'm talking about Helium Prime's um, Terror of the Cybernetic Space Monster. A cool artwork on that. Terror really. of the Cybernetic yeah, Space. Monster. And I was so pumped up for this because the like, this artwork's amazing stuff. And um, I, the first uh, their debut album, I just fell in love with. It is tattooed to my iPod CD player, da, 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 da. and it what an uplifting, joyous experience their first album is. It's, it is amazing, um, and so I was, you know, my expectations were so high, they, they were never going to meet it. But I, even so, I was. Devastated. Um, de I was so disappointed with, <laughs> with this follow up. Um, even um, well, they got signed off that off the debut album to AFM Records. I'm not sure whether this had anything to do with it. Um, and they got a new singer in. They got Heather Michelle was out, and what's his name? Michael Sozos. What's up? So yeah, Michael Sozos. So 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 Sozos, Michael. Uh, it's from Greece, uh, you know, pretty good singer. Um, but all the charm of the debut album, which had four to five minute songs, good solos, uh, vocals were solid by Heather Michelle, but she was a perfect fit for the band. All her lyrics were really clever and interesting, and the um, but the, the harmonies. Like had blind blind guardian style harmonies and big choruses that um really lifted it i can say an uplifting experience and they sound like having so much fun and then you take all that out and you have a new singer in who's you know he's pretty good they just turned into a it, this just is a american power metal band without any of the spark that i loved from the first album even when they like cause the, the the title track's 18 minutes and it's got Britney slays on it. It's I can't get through it. It's it's just hookless. Oh yeah, and I was so disappointed, and devastated. <laughs> devastated too much. The <laughs> hard, hard work. I can't uh, go there's, on. There's a, there's a couple of good ones on it. I mean, <laughs> Silent Skies had flashes of the first album in it, and um, Bury the Sun's okay. Oh, but oh, it was a bit I've forgotten. Um, after the had michelle left which i'm not sure if it was a record deal decision or this i don't know why she left um they got this other uh singer in oh yes um, i remember this what's her name kayla jackson or something who in my opinion is probably the best singer they've ever had but she only lasted one single one song yeah yes which i love that the song's amazing and she sounds amazing on it and so and then before you know it she's gone and uh so she sounds amazing it. she's a nightmare to work with <laughs> i don't know that was a joke by the way i don't have no idea but, the, but that song they did that i really like the opening track on this one the king is born it's just a rewrite of that so even off the out the gate i'm disappointed that this just sounds like a poor man's version of um remnants of stars single they did um and from then i'm you know i'm on a downer <laughs> from the start and, and, and there's nothing on it that makes it lifts me up there's no big choruses there's like uh and yeah i can't and i still got through all the the 18 minute one at the end it just seemed uh, i don't know i'm Helium so disappointed Prime. but the the um the good news is they sort of repaired the damage a little bit with the uh with the next one because the, the next one is i think it's been released independently and they got another new singer in um because they had visa issues with the uh, with sozos because he's greece from greece um and it went back to we got heather michelle back in back in to do um some lyrics and stuff like that and you can really tell the, the lyrics she's a very clever lyric writer um and the songs are memorable and catchy as hell like like they used to be um so it, so the new one makes a a uh, natural progression from the debut album so this this one I, don't know, I just didn't click and they just turned into a, a regular power metal band from and they lost all the charm from the first one which could be reason why they've gone back to uh, um doing what they do best okay then shall i say something controversial then yeah go. because we on the channel we tend to shy away from the big names not 
it's not like a conscious decision. We, there's just so much good stuff out there from bands that are not as well known. Um, which is probably why I haven't got more subscribers because we, you know, <laughs> people, people uh, shy away from finding new stuff. I, I don't know. I don't understand it. So to throw one into this list, I think I would have to throw in Iron Maiden, <laughs> who went through a pack. Oh, dear. Oh, I thought you were going to pull out some CDs. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I mean, there's no Iron Maiden on my list because I thought Panzer's never heard of Iron Maiden, obviously. Um, Iron Maiden went through a patch so bad <laughs> with the Virtual Eleven and what was the album? See, they, they slip away when you hate doing the, the X Factor, by any chance? That, the X Factor. They went through a patch where you felt very much like. They were just, they'd turn up at the studio and write the song and record it that day. You know, that'll do. Nico, what do we do at this point of the song? Oh, this is where I usually go. Oh, I'll do that then. Uh, you know, every, every time. And, and, and that, they so clearly went through the numbers for a patch. Um, and I think Blaze Bailey got a really raw deal when he joined Iron He wasn't the right guy anyway, because he didn't have the range. Blaze Bailey was a great frontman, great singer. I'm sure he still is a great frontman. Not sure if he's a great singer. But he was a great singer in, his, in, his, in the songs that he wrote, you know, it, for, with Wolf Spain before that. And then they drop him into Iron Maiden, famous for having this voice, mm. you know, uh, Bruce Fogon Dickinson at, at the front. And I know this is going off the subject slightly, but because we're talking about albums, aren't we? But I think it all was just this weird patch that Iron Maiden went through and they started and they put out these albums that I never recovered from. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean. and they've done some good stuff since, but I still feel that I don't know which album since that I could say I like all of it. Um, but having said that, I haven't given them the attention they probably deserve. Uh, like even like a matter of life and death, you know, which that's which my is that's which, my favorite the new one, which yeah. is a, that's an excellent, which I know is a good album, but it's not. You know, it's not on my usual rotation and stuff. I got Iron Maiden, and I was. I mean, I haven't got any tattoos, but if I had one, it would have been Iron Maiden that I got somewhere on me in 1980-something, <laughs> because it was just like, there was Iron Maiden, and there was everyone else, you know? <laughs> it, Iron Maiden tattooed Virtual Eleven came out. Going, yeah, yeah, I'll try and walk on off. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I've never liked anything enough to get a tattoo of it. Um, but, you know, I had the denim jacket and on, had all the patches on the back but there was a giant one of Iron Maiden in the middle and everyone else was like Metallica and Megadeth and Slayer and these, you know in smaller patches are all the bands that were around at the time kind of thing and um but this giant one of, of Iron Maiden I and it, they were amazing they still are a really fantastic band to go and see live and everything without a doubt but the X Factor and Virtual Eleven, just, they're just not any good, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I, would, I would argue the rot started to set in as soon as Adrian Smith left, because they lost a key right, key songwriter. No prayer for the dying wasn't great, but it still had three or four good ones on there. Hmm. And similar with Fear of the Dark, but as soon as, um. Bruce Dickinson left and Adrian Smith left and Martin, Bur Martin Birch left. Then you've got Steve Harris in charge, unchecked. <laughs> Twiddling everyone's probably, everyone, in the studio. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's probably too worried to say no to him. And, uh, and then, yeah. So Iron Maiden's a slight different because you can see what happened. Whereas some of these bands, you can't see what happened. They just mm. put out an album that suddenly wasn't any good. And lots of stuff probably did happen that made them put out a bad album. Yeah, but, but with Iron Maiden, it's yeah. easy to see what the yeah. what happened. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and and Iron Maiden was they they were literally like 
like I say, Iron Maiden and everyone else. Um, and still, mm -hmm. a bad album's a bad album. Uh, I think the X Factor has merit. Because <clears throat> um, with the heavy production, the X Factor m would, would be a lot better, I think. Because it had better ideas. But the, X but the virtual. And with different songs, the Astonishing would be good. <laughs> well, <virtual laughs> if it was a different album. Well, well, virtual <laughs> 11, yeah, that's not, it's not, it's not great, is it really? It just has that written and recorded in a day feel to it. Which they, which they admit they do. Uh, so. even, even Blaze Bailey in an interview said, uh, said they'd only gone through this song twice without messing it up. They said, all right, should we go for a take? And we, well, I'm going to admit, <laughs> you're doing it for the fans. So Don't you want to eke don't... out the nuances and, uh, yeah, and you know, sure. really explore the song? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nico? It... <laughs> yeah, that, that, it's, it's a case of oh that'll that'll do and i think if you're doing it i made it for the fans so i think you should put more a bit more effort into than that but that's a different topic all yeah okay then all right me next i'm gonna go i'm, I'm not saying anything else <laughs> um <laughs> it's, it's another um case of high expectations uh this was crystal viper Queen of the Witches. Um, before that, I, th I had um, Possession, and the one before it, I can't remember the name of. Um, and they re I really, really enjoyed it. Some Polish, Polish heavy metal, and then they went away for a bit because I think uh, what's the singer's name? Marta Gabriel, um, yeah. very talented. Uh, I think she got ill or something like that. I, oh, right. I think she's quite poorly, and then uh, so this was the um album that actually coming back i think the first song is the, the witch is back so it's hard to show things on a camera it's and then uh, i saw that video i thought oh yeah that's, that's not too bad and then bought the album on the strength of the song that uh, the return to form song and uh, uh yeah it was just the rest of it is just i just didn't think matched up was that to a single anything. the witch is back yeah you did it yeah right yeah did i do that <clears throat> you did yeah all oh, right because I remember hearing them doing like a doing a Judas Priest cover, but that might not be on here. It might have been just one they did, you know, mm. on on a video or, or whatever. Um, I didn't see you in hell, which is a Grim Reaper cover, isn't it? So, but um, but I, I just, it was just short of real. The the quality of the first song, um, didn't wasn't expanded for the rest of the album, and I just. Found myself struggling to get through the whole thing. It was just um, I was got three very guest musicians. I was, very, I, was, I was disappointed because say my expectations were quite high on on the album, the couple of albums previous to that. Um, I thought, oh, time away. Obviously, got some ideas together, and I was I was quite surprised at it, uh, the how poor it was. And I think there's another one since, but it's put me off. I've not gone back to them since. And, and Marta's done a, uh, she's done a solo album as well now, which sounds just like this. It is odd, I think. Is, is it odd? So, if you imagine you're a band, there's five of you, you all, assuming it's not a one man outfit who just has other musicians with them kind of thing. If you're a band and you all are involved in the, the process of making the music, and you make an album and you all work on it and it comes out really well how can how can you then a year later come out with something that's not average it's bad you know yeah. what hap where does the quality control gone did you all write it on the tour bus the next one and therefore it was just different and you just mm. didn't have the you couldn't give it the attention it required or whatever you know you just wonder sometimes how can how does this stuff get through the quality control because Surely they know whether the song is good or not. If you can write good songs, then you must yeah. know what is makes a good song. <laughs> you know, yeah, for me, you should be writing all the time and getting ideas all the time. So you know, when it, I don't know. You, you know. just wonder what's the thought process that happened, or is it like record label pressure that says you've got until mm. you've got till March well, to have I'll, it on your desk? Similar, similar scenario for. Um, that one it's uh this is the bag of souls isn't it <laughs> it's savage messiah's um hands of fate 
which is another another one another cool artwork there um i i love savage Psy. i've followed them since their ep days before they even signed and um the first three albums was just quality melodic thrash with sort of megadethy overtones and um the third one uh what's it called hands of fate i think it's the um, first track and this is called hands of fate no, it's that one then it's uh <laughs> come on brain um gone. the third album and in fact this is hands of fate not hands of fate um <laughs> third album come on it'll come back to me um which is just a melodic thrash masterpiece from start to finish every song had something about it when it was fast it was nasty and aggressive when it's melodic it was tuneful and then they made they went away for a couple of years and came back with this and all the same people um good question i think so i just wonder it, 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 if it, they it, lose a songwriter and everyone thinks well that's okay we know what we're doing it's driven by dave <laughs> dave silver right. talent, talented chap but it's, it's his band and he does have a uh, revolving door of musicians but the, uh, it feels like they've done a conscious decision to move towards more accessible music so that all the um uh, aggressiveness isn't as a, as aggressive right um some nice bits more single yeah, nice bits. <laughs> well yeah but all, all the excitement and all the energy has been sucked out of it and i saw them on this tour and they played eight tracks off this album and the difference between what they played here and then they played an older one which is faster and more aggressive and more of energy the, the difference is night and day right and um some of my friends i got some um or some of my mates into savage messiah from the first three albums i think that brilliant and they're all disappointed they thought it was, a, it was a weak album but uh they've done another one since called demons which is a, a bit of a step up from here but i think they are they have made a conscious decision or perhaps they've just evolved into something that, that um away from the thrash side of things I mean, they were never really that thrashy but they had some really cool driving driving riffs and uh, melodies and stuff like that um yeah so that, was, that was disappointing because my expectations from the pre previous album was so high yeah and uh, uh you can have a high expectations but it's, you know you can have a, an album that's not bad but when something is is sounds no energy and sounds weak and and stuff like that, you are a bit bummed out i suppose Okay then. We get any more? Have we reached the end? No, of the line? no, 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 no. I've got a few more. No, 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 no. Um, I've got. I've got a... I'll, I'll leave that one to last. Uh, this is another one. I was so disappointed with this one. This is Dream Child, uh, with an album called "Until Death Do We Meet Again." Um, first song on here sounds exactly like Dio, <laughs> and I thought, and it's got some of the Dio's band in it. I thought I was so excited getting this. It's going to sound like classic Dio, and the first song does, and the second song kind of does. And then it just goes into a self-indulgent pile of shite. <laughs> the, the, the songs just aren't there, and I was so disappointed. Self-indulgent pile of shite. <laughs> I was so disappointed, and I've not been able to get uh, uh, through all of it in one sitting. I got to about song six or seven. I got then I had to start the album again another, another day. So from twenty eighteen. Yeah. Oh, so it's pretty. It looks like an old album. Well, it is. It is. I was it is. Say it is, old, it is it? old school. Uh, I can't remember who's in it. God, the singer's great. The singer could just sound a bit like Dio, but uh, all the melodies and the charm of Dio is, is isn't there, and neither neither does songwriting. It's uh, frontier music. Yeah, no, it says it all, doesn't it? Really? It does a bit. <laughs> uh, it's another one. It's my penultimate one. Um, this has. This is a. Uh, Exiled to Infinity and One by Seven Witches. I've never heard of that. <laughs> now, this, this is, I, I, have, I can't be but disappointed. After in this. I have <laughs> never heard of it. The dust off that. And I was, I was excited to listen to this because I got it. I paid a lot of money for it because um, you couldn't get it from um, in shops. From anymore. shops. From shops. You'd never get something like that. In. That's a terrible cover. <laughs> but uh, he had uh, sabotage. Um, links to it. John Lee was on one song. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a terrible Jack, cover. Jack Frost, who's the driving force, is a guitar player. He's uh, he did he toured. He was a touring musician for Sabotage. So um, he's from the Sabotage camp 
and I'm all about sanitizer. I'll give it a wheel. Well, plus the singer is Wade Black from who did uh, that rather nifty Crimson Glory album, Astro Astronomica. All oh, right. Yeah, it's a singer from that album. He's on here, and uh, he sounds great. But the songs again, it's just, I was so disappointed because the songs are, are just poor. Um, uninspired straight heavy, heavy this, this picture here is so, <laughs> it's, it's so awkward it's, you probably can't tell right but this guy looks like serious metal guy and the other guy's biting the, 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 the tape reel and they don't it looks like it looks awkward it looks like immediately after they took that they all went what'd you do that for And but it ended up in the booklet anyway <laughs> yeah I was disappointed this, the songs aren't great the production on it the guitar tone is um, too grating for, me, for my ears it hurts my ears um, I just didn't think it was. Um, this is, I mean, it's with digital, you know. I miss all of this, all this stuff. It's just share. But I think they've got about seven albums out now. I mean, they're still, they're still going. Oh, really? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, I was quite surprised. A lot of stuff, Spotify, they've done a ton of stuff there. But, but you're they, not they, importing they, their CDs. They, this, this put me off enough, so much. Yeah. Enough. Uh, I think Jack Frost is a good player, but uh, they, I just, I was disappointed. Come from like a sabotage camp house at this point. And last one. Oh no, I've got two. This, this is never I, 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 video I, I, will I, never end. This is this is uh if anyone wants to see my Halloween thing, it's getting bottom of the list. This is my God given right. I found the C D, which I couldn't find before in the thing but, but I can't find the actual booklet. <laughs> but I found the C D, so I, I just to prove I did buy it. I do own it. Yeah. Yeah. My God given right. We'll just skip right over that one. Yes. And last and least is uh, Arch Enemy's Will to Power. It's strange because we've just done the new single. Um, and yeah, this is, I was so disappointed because my expectations were really high because I thought War Eternal was a step in the right direction. But this was Arch Enemy by the numbers. Uh, the Eagle Flies Alone, The World Is Yours. It, it's just well, everything we've, we've said. Everything uh, we said, yeah. And uh, uh, difficult to get through. And the big thing was, oh, she sings a clean bit on it so what <laughs> it's, it, the song was all right you know just because it's singing clean yeah great uh the, i think the last song was, was pretty decent but other than that it was arch enemy by the numbers and it put me off and it's amazing how one yeah. album can can really color your judgment isn't yeah, it? yeah and it's and it's, it, it, it makes you literally very very um sort of wary of of, mm. of everything but the new arch enemy one yeah, pretty good that, yeah so that, that's, that's got me pumped up to listen to anything new. deceiver yeah um and jesse jeff limis is on here but he doesn't, doesn't get involved in the writing it's just such a shame and don't i don't think he doesn't give it to i do. know when um when he went from nevermore and, and went to arch enemy you thought oh that's a real shame that he's not in nevermore anymore uh, well nevermore is no more this is getting confusing but yeah nevermore was no more and that was that was a really sad day and then it's like well he's gone to arch enemy Ooh, that might mm. that might be a really good match and then he didn't when he arrived not a lot seemed to happen did it with him no no it's, it's almost like they got him in and then, then yeah. didn't give him anything to do yeah um, and we've said on a couple of the last few videos using the facets every facet of your band and you know when he got Actually, one of the best metal players of our new gen of the new generation in your band. You don't really give him much to do, or or write. You think, oh, I don't know. It was, yeah. I mean, it's good for him. I imagine he makes much more money out of our than he ever did. <laughs> oh, never more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the the scene's richer with Jeff Loomis in it. So I don't want him to go away. But, um, it's, yeah, I think if De if Deceiver Deceiver is uh, a, a sign of things to come, that's a good thing. And um, was that? But War Eternal was a, a step in the right direction for me. Um, but this um, World of Powers, I, did, I didn't like the way they were the way they were going. Um, there you go. There you go. You've excised some demons. Um, so clearly, this is a very subjective thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> some of the, that we take personally <laughs> that this band has personally insulted us. Um, so yeah if you've made it this far wow <laughs> um, but uh, but also but, so, i'm sure you have albums in your yeah. collection that you just were so looking forward to or had you know just yeah. had such high ex expectations and then 
But I've got I've got a few albums that well, are uh, um, <laughs> that aren't very good, but one or two songs really lift it. And and there's some that I bought to think oh, it's going to be great, but I didn't like it solely because it wasn't my cup of tea. Mm. Like um, I bought a band called Velcro and uh, there was a band called Clutch. Um, I just I thought this is not it's just not for me. There's a bit. I can't really judge the album because it because still, it's because it's out yeah yeah uh I'm not, not big, I, I'm not a big yeah. um southern rock fan you know southern american rock fan so um when i listen to some like some corrosion of conformity or clutch you know it just, it doesn't click with me so uh i can't really judge whether it's good or bad so i have to go on things that my expectations are really high and i yeah. you should say clutch because my children children not really children 20 one's 21 and one's 24 um really like clutch really yeah and it's really? an old band isn't it yeah, yeah they quite yeah. like old music and i think i've influenced them somewhat in mm. their musical taste not somewhat a lot <laughs> um by ridiculing anything i didn't like like a proper parent <laughs> um and yeah and then they've gone off in their they've struck off a bit in their own direction and they like stuff like mm. clutch and, and and things like that which makes me complain so they play it even more <laughs> don't like it it's too so, loud you're too old you know, well, they come and tell me to turn my music down so that's you know so still got it anyway let us know i'm sure you have albums you'd like to suggest um or disagree with us or agree with us maybe even let us know this has been i don't know how long but it feels like we've been here a while uh we'll see you soon see you now bye bye, bye.